Hey, what's up, guys? Tim Wright here. Welcome to the collection reviews. Today, I've got an amazing collection to share with you guys. It's our good friend's Cars and Chronos collection. And he was kind enough to send me images of everything that he's got. Although <laughs> he keeps changing pieces. So, so his collection is uh, continually evolving. But hopefully we will be able to revisit this in some uh, not so distant future and uh, and see how it grows and how it changes and develops. But uh, before we start, let me show you uh, a wristwatch check real quick. Uh, I've got my Rolex Explorer 1, the 36 mil, the lady size, of course. <laughs> oh, man, still enjoying the watch, still enjoying the watch and loving it even more as time goes by. So just really quickly about Carson Crono. He says that uh, he fell in love with watches when his dad purchased his first day date uh, back when Carson Crono was still in high school. And since then, he has always loved watches. And uh, for the longest time, he had the Movado. But then over time, you know, he started getting more pieces and more pieces. Uh, but I, I mean... We uh, will probably never know <laughs> the whole evolution of his collection. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at what he has now. And uh, let's try to give him some direction of where to go. And if you have any suggestions for him, uh, please make sure to leave a comment. And if you enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, etc. You know? So let's get into it. Uh, so he sent me an image of two LV boxes of eight watches each and one uh, smaller box of three pieces. Um, so let's just start with uh, box number one, uh, which contains <laughs> from uh, what it looks like uh, a Patek Philippe 5270P with the salmon dial. <sighs> I mean, that's probably one of the best Patek Philippe's that money can buy I mean, within reason. I mean, it's a manual wind, mechanical movement, perpetual calendar chronograph. I mean, what in platinum with a salmon dial. Now, I, I think it even um, I think it even comes with uh, interchangeable back so you can have a solid platinum back. Or you can put the sapphire in. That way, uh, you know, you can get an engraving on the back uh, if you like the solid, the solid back. But whew, probably, probably the highest complication that mere like humans can buy, because obviously Paddock makes some ridiculous stuff. But that 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 stuff is completely insane. Then moving over to the second piece, it looks like he's got the Patek Philippe 5212. That's the weekly calendar, of course. It's, uh, I think it's the first steel color trava. Uh, until this point in time, all the color travas were uh, precious metal. Uh, but this one is made in steel and it's got the, the, the newest, well, at least a couple of years ago, it was the newest um, automatic movement, uh, which was like, uh, I think caliber three, three, zero. It's got, it's got this incredible weekly calendar display. I mean, I don't know who would benefit from this kind of weekly, uh, complication, but it is incredible to behold, especially that silvery opaline dial with blackened uh, white gold hour markers and all, and the hands and everything man the if you look at it up close it just it looks ridiculous the way the hands absorb the light uh it's just it's incredible like i i've seen blued hands but these blackened hands is it, it's it's amazing and uh i actually i really like the the, the strap I think it looks so amazing. Actually, I've seen this watch on the display back when I was in Geneva a couple of years ago. 
It's gorgeous. It was for display only, of course. Okay. Next, uh, we move to the third piece, which is his latest acquisition, which is the Patek Philippe 5980, one in rose gold. Now, this takes the Patek Philippe 5711, which I found to be a little bit disappointing in person because it's very light on the wrist. It doesn't have any presence. You know, when I wear the Explorer 1, I don't want to have any presence on the wrist. But 5711 Patek, you know, you want to feel like you're wearing something. And for a watch that's so hard to get your hands on, then you try it on, it's just like, oh. It wears like Explorer 1. Ah, that's not so good. But uh, this uh, 5980, it's got that heft of gold. So it actually feels the way it is. It's impressive. It's an impressive watch. The fourth watch in this box is Lange and Zun or Lange and Zuna. Lange and Zuna. I'm going to have uh, Marcus tell us how, how to pronounce it again. <laughs> Lange and Zuna. And that's the double split. So it's not just a chronograph. Not just a split chronograph. A uh, split chronograph would just split one minute. A double split can split seconds and minutes. <laughs> not only is that kind of ridiculous and impressive technologically you look on the back side of that movement it's insane now in chronographs you have to understand column wheel chronographs are considered you know the benchmark if it's not a column wheel chronograph then i mean it's not real chronograph it's it's bs but for this double split chronograph Lange had to put in two, two column wheels. If you look at that back, it just blows your mind. That's how impressive it is. But it's not cheap to make. I mean, that thing is expensive. Now, when we move down, that's an FB Jorn Chronometer Opaline Black Label. Now, if you thought getting F.B. Jorn was difficult to get black label, you have to have already purchased an F.B. Jorn in the past from F.B. Jorn before. What the hell? Now, uh, now this uh, chronometer opaline, uh, from what I understand, is that uh, it's got like two barrels. So usually uh, a watch is powered by the mainspring. Now, this one got two mainspring barrels uh, that release force at the constant rate. And uh, what happens, like, instead of uh, force coming out and, you know, having ha having faster beat in the beginning when the, fa uh, when the mainspring is completely wound and uh, slower beat when it's completely unwound, this two uh, barrels it work in parallel to give off like a constant uh, force, which makes the, the watch super accurate. <laughs> and it also got like a deadbeat seconds on the back. So it's like a, almost a quartz. It's like a, it works like a quartz movement in the back. It's pretty ridiculous technology, but complicated, extremely complicated. Now, <laughs> now we actually move from a super complicated FB Jorn to what looks like to be Breitling Navy Timer 1959 re-edition. Okay, and that's going to be a kind of a pattern here because uh, there's quite a few re-editions in this collection. Now, uh, Breitling, I think, Breitling is completely freaking lost. I don't know who their CEO is, but it just... I looked at the new, these new releases and they're just co they're copying Patek. Like they released a watch that looks almost the same like uh, that uh, the Patek Philippe 5270. I mean, they don't know 
what they're doing. Um, but this re-edition, they claim, was uh, they tried to re literally remake the Navy Timer back from 1959. Which is okay. That's okay. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's like a vintage watch, but remade fresh. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, can't say anything bad about that that watch. It's it's a pretty impressive. Uh, it's a pretty impressive piece. Next, we got a Vacheron Constantine overseas dual time steel blue dial. This is a competitor to the Royal Oak competitor to the Patek Philippe 5711. My only worry is that this is a, a Gen 3 version. Now, if you look back to the Gen 1, that was like that didn't age well. It looks ugly today. You look to the Gen 2, also kind of ugly. Now, this one, I gotta be honest, it looks freaking amazing but does it look amazing today okay that's what i'm worried about because maybe this design will not age as well as 5711 aged or the royal oak those designs seem to be timeless uh whereas Vacheron has struggled to create a timeless steel sports watch. However, I have a lot of hope. I mean, this watch is technologically super impressive. The way uh, the GMT function works with the jumping uh, hour, uh, no, not the jumping hour, yeah, jumping hour, AM, PM indicator, second pusher to jump to adjust the date. And that amazing bracelet that uh, expands. <sighs> Impressive. Okay. Uh, piece number eight. Now that's Vacheron Constantine 19, 1921 Historiques in platinum. God damn. I think that was limited to like a hundred pieces. Yeah, like a like hundred pieces. It's in platinum. It's got some amazing dial that looks like i don't know, like some silver dust it's it's ridiculous with a platinum thread that goes through uh uh the strap it's next level thing i mean uh i i was satisfied with just the regular hysterics and uh, you know, with all the history that it's a driver's watch because it's at the angle that, or maybe it was a priest's watch because you can pray and look at the watch. I just like the way it looks compared to, for example, Calatrava because I always thought of Vacheron Historiques as being the true competitor to Calatrava because they're different, yet... The function is the same. It's just a simple hour, minute, seconds. Yeah, one is the angle. The other one is, is just plain. But that's that's what, what I always thought. Like, oh, those two, for me, were always the competitors and not, uh, and not the other ones. So, man, that watch is <sighs> impressive. Especially for someone who, who likes driving. Uh, like uh, Cars and Chrono does. Okay, now we're moving from the first box, which was mind-blowing, to a, a more humble, yet still pretty insane box. Uh, and we start with the Kudoki. Now, I, I'm not Marco, so I don't really know too much about the Kudoki, but this is the Kudoki 2. I guess these are handmade by Stefan Kudoki. But I really actually, I, I am quite impressed by this watch. Because it's got uh, hours and minutes. And then he's got a 24-hour indicator at the top. With this very interesting uh, kind of disc. Where the top, top half shows the day and the bottom half shows the night. And there's like a little, little triangle that indicates where in the time zone... Uh, 
we're at like we're at i guess so basically it's got the 24 uh, it, it's a very simple complication but very elegant and it's hand engraved Pff, amazing amazing and then you turn it around and it's got a very unique looking movement it's just like unlike anything i would expect from from something like this uh, i think i think they're probably these are in-house or something he probably the guy probably makes these i'm not gonna bother looking it up but you look at something like this especially when you compare it to the second watch in this box which is the kurono the hajimi uh hajimi Asoka Corona, uh, and that looks like a Tokyo chronograph. Uh, now, this is where the where the difference is. Where is Corona uh, has just a basic? I think it's just a, it's probably just a Seiko movement because uh, uh, he's Japanese and he makes these amazing dials. Now, the dials are freaking unbelievable. I called it the panda in the tuxedo that's my nickname for for <laughs> for chronograph one but it's got the solid case back because he's not showing the movement because it's just your regular uh movement i mean you can't you can't make your own movements all the time so especially if you got this incredible dial this incredible hands i love the hands on corona and uh I love also the logo, the way the way he has the the Japanese. It says something. Probably it says uh, Corona, but I don't care if the movement is not the in-house. And uh, actually, I, I I really liked his latest release, which was that Corona with the salmon dial. I think it was like brass or something. But it looked freaking amazing. If I didn't buy the Ming a couple months ago, I probably would have went for the Corona. Because I, I thought the Corona looks better. Compared to the Ming that I bought. But anyways, let's go to the next one. And it's Blank Pond 50 Fathoms. No radiation. I mean, look. I, I actually I kind I had I had a debate about this watch late, lately. And look, if anything. Blank, let's be clear. Blank Pond, they're in the worse spot than Breitling. These guys are completely hopeless. They're not making anything that's good. I don't know. They, they need to fire their whole staff and just start from the beginning. Seriously. like Because Hodinki had to tell them not to to make the 50 fathoms a 40 millimeter size case and not that ridiculous 45 mil come on and then this is only one of their wearable versions of their watches and it's limited edition to fifth to 500 pieces it's a joke so out of blank pond i would say yeah this is the one to get the the, the no red or the other one uh i forgot i'm blanking i'm blanking Drinking a little bit too much sex on ooh. drinking a little bit too much sex on the beach, guys. Look, it is it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Now, next he says he's got OP39 red grape, but that doesn't look like nope, that's a grand Seiko. And from the looks of it, it looks like an autumn limited edition. So there is a Grand Seiko, the Snowflake, that everybody loves and adorns. But it looks like... Uh, I, know, I know he has the Red Grape because I've seen it in his previous images where it was next to the Domino's Air King. So he has those two, but I think he mislabeled it. Yep. So Autumn. Next, we got the Rolex Deep Sea. Pfft, awesome. I don't think if there. I mean, Grand. Oh, let's, let's go back to Grand Seiko. I'm not a big fan of Grand Seiko, but it's because I I'm not really big fan of their fancy schmancy uh, movements. I think they're too complicated. The whole spring drive thing, technology. I'm not I'm not impressed. 
Uh, but I'm not sure. I think this one doesn't have the spring drive. So, and especially I really liked their new, uh, the, was it the, the pines? No, it's not the pines. It's the, the Creed Aventus version. Um, damn. I think I'm a little bit, uh, it's a little bit too late at night for me to remember. But, uh, what was it? The birch! The birch! The birch got this amazing new automatic movement. So I think I'm going to start liking, uh, Grand Seiko a lot more. I like I, I, one thing I would wish is that if they took these amazing dials that they put on the snowflake and they put them in with the quartz movement, that would be amazing. Please, Grand Seiko, make some of your um, put some of those amazing dials on just the basic quartz movement. That's all I want. That's all I want. Please. Okay. All right, let's go next. Rolex Deep Sea. I think, from what I remember, I remember Marco was telling me that uh, this this is the watch that uh, Carson Cronus' wife gave him for wedding or something. Hey, Deep Sea. Whoo! Chunky watch. Chunky watch. Big boy. Big boy. Big boy watch. Never get rid of it. It's a... It's a Stunning piece, stunning piece. Sometimes I look at my sub and I think, I wish it was a deep sea or sea dweller, you know, because you can, you, you can criticize it all you want, but that watch does get compliments because it's just in your face. It's awesome. <laughs> all right. Next, we got Panda and the Platona. Do I have to say anything more about them? Uh, maybe maybe if you got the Platona you don't really need just the Panda but hey hey, if you like the Panda a Platona can't hurt Um, I would well, well I'll, I'll talk about recommendations a little bit later but let's go to the last piece and it's a Sky Dweller Blue Dial Oyster Bracelet now, now that the Jubilee now that you can get uh, actually, uh, now the Sky Dwellers come with Jubilee bracelet, but I believe you can go to the, to your AD and you can get a Jubilee bracelet to go with the Oyster bracelet. And then you can swap them around. So, Cars and Corner, make sure you go and get that second bracelet. Can't, can't do it without the second bracelet. So, it's a must-have. All right. Next, we got three pieces. Three speedies that looks like a speedy 45th anniversary moon watch well that's he, he wrote it that that, that 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 that's what it is then project alaska what the project alaska i hope he got that capsule i'm gonna try to put oh yeah yeah yeah. i'm gonna put all the watches on this side i'm gonna after after i film the video i'm gonna go on the internet and i'm gonna put all the images here <laughs> i hope he got that capsule that you put the the alaska project in uh i guess it's designed so that it can withstand m more severe temperatures although i have no idea how it works maybe it's like battery powered that it warms it up who knows it's but it looks freaking insane and freaking cool it's a it's a cool toy and then he's got now he says that it's a reverse Panda Speedy Tuesday, celebrating fifth anniversary of Speedy Tuesday. But I don't know what the hell that is. It just it looks like a blue. I thought I thought that the Speedy Tuesday fifth anniversary of Speedy Tuesday. Man, the, whatever that thing is that he has in the image, it's rare, probably AF because. I don't think I ever seen that one. I gotta be honest. I don't think I never. I, I don't think I've ever seen that speedy. Blue. With a blue strap. Hmm. No idea. Never seen it. And okay. Then 
it looks like he got rid of a couple of watches. And there's an F. Bjorn that's no longer in. It blows my mind that 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 I don't see that the vertical. I think he had like a a, a vertical. Uh, what's it called? What was it? Huh. Anyways, he had he had another another F. Bjorn that's gone. Uh, but it looks like he's got three watches that are inbound. Number one, Moser Streamliner Flyback Chronograph in the blue color. That's pretty crazy. I mean, Moser Streamliner. I, I think they're actually quite small, which is perfect. Which is perfect because uh, it's going to go really well with those Daytonas. Daytonas are quite small. And having something super complicated with them is going to be really nice. Then he's got a Vacheron Overseas Ultra Thin Perpetual Calendar in pink gold coming. Pink gold, but I think it mean, he means rose gold. Which is even more ridiculous than his uh, dual time. Because I don't know how Vacheron does it, but the Perpetual Calendar is thinner than the dual time like what it makes even no sense but that's the truth guys and also he's got fp Jorn resonance black label fuck resonance and another black label ridiculous stuff i mean those three pieces i mean you add those three pieces now that's oh my god actually look he's gonna have to add like 10 more i i, I don't even know how, how many more but it's gonna be way more should he keep like now here's the question should he keep all of these watches or does he have to get rid of something oh it's a good question oh man if i if i had to if i was told hey Tim, you, you're going to have to get rid of some of these pieces. Which ones would I get rid of? If I had to, if I had to. Okay. Out of this collection? <sighs> mm, maybe because maybe I would get rid of the Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko is on the chopping block for me. Because it's a Grand Seiko. I think there are better Grand Seikos out there. Especially Marcus would know something about Grand Seikos. Because the autumn, while it's cool, I don't think it's it's so unique. So unique. If you like it, that's fine. That's fine. So it's a it's a it's a cool watch. But also, I think the panda is on the chopping block because got the platona platinum panda. What? I would actually swap the the platinum panda for the meteorite dial panda. And actually, uh, we were talking on the live show today, and per wait, who was it? Perth Luxury, I think he confirmed that you can take your Daytona and you can, for I think $6,000 US, they can swap the dial for a meteorite dial. <laughs> what? So I would either put the meteorite dial in there or swap it for a white gold meteorite dial. Look, Panda is good, but... Mm. It's okay. Then Brightling. Brightling is on the chopping block. Um, it's cool, but it's actually like right after Brightling, it would be the the blank pond for me, because these vintage recreations, I don't think, and eh, they're kind of cheesy. They're cute. They're cute. I gotta be honest. They're cute. They're fun to have to to play around with, but. I would actually try to get the the real deal. Get the vintage ones. Oh, yeah, they're expensive, but they're freaking expensive. But they're the real deal. This is just like a it's almost like a homage. It's it's so cheesy. And and the Hodinki, they did it for money. You know, they're just trying to You know, cause like when they were doing Oh, 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 I remember the uh, the blank pond. It was called the mill spec, the mill spec, because it was according to military specification. I think that's why it's got that dot, right? So I would try 
to get one of those. Because back then, they were actually creating something for a purpose. And that was for military purpose. Whereas now, the new Blank Pond mil spec is just kind of designed for selling to, to people, which is ah, it's cheesy. But okay, but look, I mean, those watches are super hard to get. If you want to go out on a, on a wild goose chase, that's the ones you probably should swap. Get some old watches in there. All right. Now, what about the Omegas? The three speedy speedies. Keep or on the chopping block? Ah, if it was me. Look, I actually, I do like the last one. The blue dial, the reverse panda with the blue strap. It actually kind of looks pretty impressed. Uh, the, the Alaska project, it's cool, I guess. It's cool. And uh, the Snoopy. Oh, maybe, you know what? Maybe I got them wrong. Maybe they're reversed. They're reversed, maybe. Uh, I don't know. They're cool. But are they Louis Vuitton box worthy? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, if I had to flip them, I, I would get rid of those watches first that I mentioned, and then I would start getting rid of uh, the Omegas. If I had to. If I had to. For now, they can stay. Of course they can stay. Especially when the 36 slot box comes. There's going to be plenty of room. Now, let's get into what I would recommend you get. Okay, and this is, I'm going to start, I'm just going to start out right out the gate with the, the stuff people don't want to hear. Okay, well, what's, what do, what, what do I recommend that, that you try to get your hands on? Well, you can say I'm crazy, but. I actually think that currently the factory diamond Rolexes, the Submariner, the GMT, or the Daytona, I'm specifically talking about the reference, 116659 Sarb, the Submariner with diamonds, factory diamonds, okay, factory diamonds, I'm talking about 126755 Saru, Saru, GMT, <sighs> amazing. Again, factory diamond GMT Master 2. And I would throw in a rainbow Daytona in there as well. I mean, it's impo so expensive. I know. But right now, they're actually quite under undervalued because of how rare those pieces are. I think they actually got some legs. Like, for example, the Panda, it's got a lot of hype around it, but because they're actually, they're quite, there's quite a lot of volume of them when compared to those Rainbow Daytona Pandas. Not the Panda, but Daytonas, Rainbow Daytonas, okay? So, and it, it also has, it has also part to do with a lot of people misunderstand Rolex. And what they're trying to do. And when you look at Rolex, what are they known for? In-house robust movement. Okay. In-house foundry and gold. Okay. And in-house diamond setting. Rolex diamond setting is some of the best diamond settings on the market. I mean, this just, it's... I think their reputation has been a little bit tarnished because of those gray market butchers that put on those aftermarket diamond bezels into the day justs and they just ruin Rolex watches by, you know, busting them out. Or is it called bust out? I'm not sure what they're called, but there's so many Rolexes that have been ruined because. They put in too many diamonds in aftermarket. Actually, they put in any diamonds 
If anyone should be putting diamonds into the watches, it should be the manufacturer himself. And I think that's the kind of thing that the, that that Rolex's in-house diamond setting has been kind of ruined because of these gray markets. But I think there's so much value because they're so rare. Okay, so I would go after those three. I would, I would, I would try to get maybe one. You don't need to get all three. You don't have to get the GMT, the Sub, and the Daytona. Just get one, 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 and then add one meteorite dial Rolex. Yes, yes, maybe uh, something like one two six seven one nine BLRO, the GMT with the meteorite dial, the Pepsi, <gasps> the Space Pepsi. It's so freaking amazing. I love the Space Pepsi. Or the Space Panda. So you can get one diamond, one meteorite dial. Man, meteorite dial is so cool. Yes, there are other brands that do meteorite dials at the fraction of the cost. But their meteorite work is not even close to the way Rolex does it, okay? I've seen the Rolex meteorites in person. They're amazing and if you think about it what it takes for the meteorite to arrive on earth the the it, tra it traveling billions of years through space and then landing on earth it's a fluke it, it's it's like one in a quadrillion billions it's it's insane and then having that in a watch romantic AF so those are my Rolex recommendations I you know you got the platinum oh, oh, oh. maybe you got the platinum uh, in the Daytona then you can get a meteorite GMT and because you don't have a sub you can get a sub with the diamonds boom there you go those three you have to get one of each category okay Okay, let's move on because this video is getting completely out of control. Okay, next, every massive collection has got to have Santos the Cartier. I mean, come on. And if I had money, I would go for the steel version with skeletonized dial. Oh, my God. It looks so amazing. And the way that they integrated the movement into the skeleton dial, it's just, ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's the reference WHSA0015. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It got interchangeable straps. It's, uh, it's also, I think it's actually manual. Wind. It is. It's a manual wind Santos Cartier. I mean, Cartier invented the wristwatch for Santos Dumont. You cannot have a wristwatch, a massive wristwatch collection that doesn't have a Santos Dumont. I don't care. You got to have one. You don't like my recommendation? Get any other San, uh, Santos. Okay? That's that's it. You got to have it. You got to have. Okay? Next. Now this is I'm it's going to be something funky and kind of a little bit stupid, but Bulgari Octofenissimo GMT Chronograph. I know it is pretty it's pretty ridiculous but the reference 103068 it looks so cool because it's got that peripheral rotor. Now you can't find that type of rotor on I don't know I don't know any other watch that has that kind of rotor. It's funky, it's fun, it looks like something made by space aliens or something. Okay, so there you go. There's Bulgari. This is like a weird watch. All right, next. Automized PK Royal Oak Offshore Chronograph or just regular Royal Oak Chronograph. It's either Offshore or just the regular Royal Oak Chronograph. I don't care. I like, I personally, I would go with the Offshore with the ceramic bezel because it doesn't scratch uh, and rubber strap. It's like a G-Shock on steroids. I love it. I love it. You want to feel like a movie star? That's right. You get the offshore. And then I'm just going to throw in something 
freaking ridiculous in here. And I'm doing this because, you know, you have such a massive collection, right? 36, you're going to have a 36 pieces, right? I think you need a little bit yin to the yang. And I would put in there a Casio F. 91W. It, uh, just to be ironic, if anything, you know, because like, look, they're in this world of like a few watches and stuff. You know, you got that paddock, rose gold. Uh, and then you have something to balance it out. You know, you go to a party when everybody is wearing uh, their paddock Philippe's, you know. It, Everybody's trying to flex, flex on each other. And then you bust out a Casio. Damn. I know I'm going to get a lot of uh, a lot of hate for this one, but I think there's room in this collection for something ironic. Because I look at this collection and there's a lot of different. It's like a Jackson Pollock painting. It's got everything. It's got a few watches, it's got hort horology, it's got handmade stuff, it's got rare stuff out of exotic materials, and then it's got just like joke watches. So why not dedicate one spot to the king of shitters? I think that'd be that'd be ironic if anything. It would be freaking weird AF. I think a lot of people would be surprised by that. They would be going through like, okay, we got a Patek Philippe 5270P, 5212, and the Casio. What the f <laughs> Man, I think it would be... It... You put those watches next to each other. You're going to be a, a freaking legend. I don't know. That's just me thinking. Just... Maybe, maybe it's the, the sex on the beach talking. But maybe not. We'll see where this collection goes. So, uh, by the way, guys. If you, if you sat through to the end of this video, I want to thank you one more time. I want to remind you to please like, comment, subscribe. Check out my membership program. we got a Discord where we talk about watches like literally 24-7. So, make sure to become a member. When you become a member, there's a button. You click on it. Boom, you're in. Also, go to my website. You can email me from there. Uh, we can talk about if you want a collection review like this of your own. Make sure to email me. We can talk about it. And I'll see you on the live show.